Hello everybody, I'm going to read the next part of the Peter Rabbit story for you. Okay, so. Lunch later, asks B, too far away to see what the rabbits are doing to Thomas. That would be wonderful, says McGregor, as more fruit lands. Okay then, see you later, says B, as she's about to go back inside. She remembers something else. Red or white wine? Thwap! Clunk! Either one, says McGregor, dodging a tomato. You choose, says B. White, yells Mr McGregor, as fruit lands on his face. Peter and the rabbits are making progress. They can just feel it. McGregor will crack at any moment right in front of B. McGregor turns to stare at the rabbits as B heads back inside her cottage. He needs to calm down and think calm thoughts. The rabbits all look at Peter. That did not go to plan at all. McGregor was supposed to get angry in front of Bee so she could see the real him. Blackberries, said Peter suddenly. The bunnies race to the blackberry bush and grab one scraggly berry each. They begin throwing them at McGregor with real gusto. Thomas cleverly ducks and dodges each one. The berries sail past their mark. Flopsy, though, still has hers. She rears back with all her might, while Mopsy motions for Flopsy to aim wide right. Flopsy lets the the blackberry go, and it flies right down McGregor's open mouth. Flopsy did it! She jumps up and down in delight as Mopsy cheers her on. Blackberry! McGregor gasps and clutches his throat. He starts to turn red and choke. He staggers, unable to breathe, and drops to his knees. McGregor stares at Peter and the others, and they all laugh back in his face, willing him to react. What's he going to do about it? Quickly, McGregor takes out his EpiPen and stabs himself on the thigh. Adrenaline surges through his body. Ah! He says as he sucks in lungfuls of air. Beautiful, beautiful air. Then his face darkens. That's it! McGregor charges into the garden, right through the gate and right back out of the garden and across the way. The rabbits watch as determined Mr. McGregor heads straight for the burrow. Oh dear. McGregor pulls the explosives out of the burrow's entrance and marches back towards the manor. He's furious and drops some in his anger, including the one that has the the deterrator attached to it. Peter watches and smiles. McGregor is losing it. B will soon see the sort of man he is. And we've got him, says Peter, turning to the others. Remember your training? The rabbits all scamper away. McGregor charges into the garden and into the shed. He emerges with his lighter and sets about lighting one of the red stick explosives before tossing it into one of the vegetable patches. Boom! A cauliflower explodes in front of the rabbits. They dive out of the way. Boom! An aubergine explodes next. Boom! 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 Three corn cobs shoot off their stalks like fireworks. The battle is on. She'll be here in no time, says Peter, rubbing his paws together. What Peter and the others don't know is that B will not be there any time soon because she cannot hear anything. B is busy painting and listening to some calming music. The tunes completely drown out the sound of the shouting and the exploding vegetables. The rabbits fight back. Peter finds a clean shot of McGregor. Now, he calls. The rabbits start attacking McGregor with any vegetables that he has not yet blown up. He staggers to the ground, but still manages to light another explosive. The rabbits' eyes go wide as the rain of fire falls from above them. Boom! A cabbage explodes. The rabbits dive for cover. Then a bunch of radishes... Shards of vegetables explode everywhere as the rabbits try to avoid the shrapnel. Next, a green leafy vegetable explodes and hits Peter right in the mouth. Poof! Ugh! Kale! He says as he spits it out. 
Benjamin takes a clear shot at McGregor with a stalk of bristle sprouts. The sprouts hit their target and explode in his face like a grenade. Nice, Benjamin, says Peter. Doesn't mean I approve, Benjamin replies. Why isn't she here yet? How could she not have heard all this? B is still listening to music while painting a portrait that seems to get worse with each brushstroke. She has no idea about the vegetable battle happening outside and the assaults continue as McGregor lights more explosives and the rabbits throw more vegetables. Animals have come from everywhere to watch the fight unfold. Pigling Bland, Tommy Brock, the squirrels and Mrs Tiggywinkle look from one side of the battle to the other, munching on corn like it's popcorn. I'm hit, shouts Flopsy suddenly. Flopsy, no, says Mopsy, turning to her sister in horror. Flopsy's fur is covered in red. Flopsy gives it a lick. It's just a beetroot, I'm fine. This is getting quite scary, Mopsy, says Flopsy. I know, but Peter knows what he's doing, right? Mopsy looks across the battlefield as explosions, hand-to-hand combat and flying vegetables are launched across the garden. Then a plum flies into the shed window. The gerbils are bunkered inside, shaking and shell-shocked. I want to go back to the cage, says one of the gerbils. Let's find a pet store. We're not built for freedom, says the other gerbil. They hold each other tight take a deep breath and make a dash across the battlefield to the other side. Benjamin is worried for the triplets. I'm getting the girls out of here, he yells at Peter above the noise. No, trust me, she'll come. I've got the... But before Peter can finish, his face gives him away. He's worried this time, really worried. Okay, and that's the end of the chapter for today. So make sure you check your Google Classrooms for the next part tomorrow. See you all soon. Bye.